I'm in the process of taking the crossover out. My four crossover seals are bad. I did this job about 12 years ago and uh, they're leaking again. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I moved and I haven't found my repair book for this car. So I'm just going to uh, do it from scratch. First thing I'm going to do is remove the air box. Okay, I've taken it out up to this bracket. Now I'm going to remove this top cover for the uh, computer. Okay, I'm going to have to remove this front panel first. Push the centers down here and these things come out. Okay, it's three Phillips screws. Okay, it pulls out from this side. I'll pull the computer up and set it off to the side. That should be good for now. Now I'll remove the bottom of this. I think it's a torque screw down in there. Okay, yeah, that was a star bed. I also removed the a bolt going through there. It's a star bit too. I put it back in the frame. I couldn't find my star bit so I used a I think it was a yeah it was a 5 30 seconds uh, hex bit Allen wrench. I'm probably not doing this to specs. I'm not a mechanic. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. This is probably going to be have, have to be loosened up eventually but I'm going to wait on that. Okay, I'm going to reposition this transmission uh, hose. Just move it out of the way. Time to remove this upper coolant hose. I'll have to drain the coolant. Okay, I've got the upper radiator hose off and now I'm going to disconnect uh, this one right here and this lower one. Okay, um, got that hose off. Went ahead and just disconnected this whole hose. It's time for a new thermostat too. What I'm going to do now is remove this hose. Okay, that was a brake booster hose. And now I'm going to remove uh, this brace here. There's two bolts. There's this bolt here and there's this bolt right there. Okay, uh, that's a 15 millimeter deep socket. I removed the hose. Okay, I'm gonna have to take uh, this water pump cover off. And also that bolt that's holding the fuel lines. Okay, I'm gonna remove this nut now to remove this bracket. And uh, also remove the nut on the oil dipstick that's going to have to come out. Okay, there's a couple more bolts. Uh, uh, one bolt and one nut on the bottom side of that bracket. And I still haven't gotten the oil dipstick tube out. This thing actually might have to be pulled off. There's a gasket on that, so I'm uh, going to wait on that. I'm going to try to get this uh, hose off here, this water hose. Okay, I got the clamp backed off. I think what I'll do now is take the four nuts off of the water pump cover. Okay, I ended up taking the two nuts off the bottom of this air valve. And there's a gasket on it, but I think I can reuse it. I had to do that to get get to the other water pump uh, bolts. That let me remove this bracket. You can see the two bottom holes. It's a bolt in there and a nut down there. A couple of the tools that are invaluable f uh, for me doing this is a got these ratcheting 
uh, 13 millimeter and 10 millimeter wrenches. I also have been using this <coughs> um, stubby ratcheting wrench. That is a quarter inch. I got that at Harbor Freight. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but I just, I took this uh, bracket bolt out down here so I could move this around to get to my last uh, bolt on the water pump, the water pump cover. Okay, I got the water pump cover loose uh, right here, so I'm going to work on getting this off. Okay, I got that cover off. There's a lot of corrosion going on. I'm gonna have to clean that up. Okay, don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna just uh, remove this belt on the water pump. I'm just pushing on this, and that'll get it off. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go ahead and take that bolt off of this brace here. And then I'll take this little piece of hose off so I can get to these three um, connectors here. There's a yellow one on top and the blue black one and then there's one underneath that. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove this hose here, this small one. Okay, I'm going to have to take this cover off and take the, the uh, nuts off of the brackets holding this. And what we can see here is we've already uncovered one of the bolts. Uh, it's right under the water pump here. I don't know if you can see it. And then here's another one right here. Here's another one over here. So we're going to have to take this throttle body off. Okay, I'm going to remove this airline right here behind. Okay, I pried it up with a screwdriver. And then this one, which goes over here, has a PVC valve, or a PCB, whatever it's called, and I'll try to take it off at this end too. Okay, I'm not sure the name of these, but they're just spin off. And then this tube can be moved up and out of the way. Okay, it's been so long I can't remember what I did, but it's just going little by little here. So this brace here, I think it's a servo brace. It goes back here to, to this. I think that's about to how they cruise. But anyway. Gotta get this brace off. There's there's two looks like two bolts holding it right here to the throttle body. So I'll release those and then I'll also take these fuel lines out of here. Okay, there's a hidden bolt under here. Before I can take that brace off. Okay, I got that brace out and now I need to get the the uh wire with cable there's two cables and it's up in there let's see somewhere in there I think that'll be released okay I got one of the cables out I haven't figured out the other one I did disconnect this blue uh, electrical connector not sure uh, what that is and to get the one cable off uh, it's right here so it pops off of the post you can get it turned uh, 
and then there's a spot to put a screwdriver and those slots to push it off the post. I'm just going to continue to free up the throttle body. Um, that's already off. So I can start taking that off. Okay, uh, this, this screw we took out up here was holding the frame. That's one of the uh, holding this this guard here. That's one of the bolts, and then the other one, which I've loosened, is down here. So I think the other one's over in the other corner. Okay, that's that one. And then we got the throttle body coming off now. Okay, uh, got that off, and now I probably don't have to take this cable off, but I do see how it works now. Um, the cable comes right out and down out of the bottom if you can get enough slack. Okay, pretty sure these fuel lines are going to have to come out, but I'll wait on that just a little bit. But you can see two more of the crossover studs, and then if you look way down in there, you can see uh, another one down there. Okay, I'm going to remove this wire harness from the, uh, from there, and I'll remove this clip. And at some point, I'm going to remove um, the fuel line, and I'll have to remove the injectors, and I'll probably end up taking off the electrical connectors. I'm kind of anxious to get those bolts out, so I'm going to start taking the crossover um, bolts that I can see out. The one under the water pump. That one there. That one there. You'll want to keep these in order because they're different lengths. Okay, this uh, one down here. I've got it loose. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. It won't come out because this is in transmission's in the way. But I used these two wrenches to get that one in loose. That was kind of tricky. Uh, this next one here, I'm just going to use a regular breaker bar with an extension. That one, and then I'll just use my ratcheting wrench. This one. Okay, I got that one out. The long one. Ended up using that wrench. Uh, the next bolt, I'll do the same way. Okay, those are the same length. There's another one right to the right of that. I'll take that out. Okay, that one is a little bit longer and different looking. There's two more down below there. Don't know if I can get them now yet or not. Okay, so this shield here is held on by two 10 minutes millimeter nut so I've got that off so I can lift the shield out of here and now, I, now I can see the uh, the bolts for the actual EPR so I'll loosen them up okay got that EGR off now don't know if you can see it, but there's a bolt down below uh, holding on, I believe it's the incoming pipe onto the crossover. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it, but I'm going to loosen that bolt so I can pull that inlet away. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but I got, I got the bolt out and it's bracket there is loose uh, pipes not pulling out yet but it will later okay this water line 
Ooh, a bird landed on me. This uh, water line is kind of stiff and in the way, so I'm going to release this uh, brace bolt. And I'm not a mechanic, you know, this probably isn't the proper way, but I just, uh, maybe if any of you have suggestions for other people watching this, that's, leave your comments. I'm just doing what makes sense to me. Yeah. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. By the way, I got that last bolt out with the sandy ratcheting wrench. Uh, would have been very, very difficult to do it any other way. Okay, I got it. Sometimes I like to hold my magnet down there so when the nut finally comes off, I don't drop it. And there's a lot of tight fit here. It takes tiny, tiny fingers to get some of this stuff off. Okay, that took the bracket off of this, and I apologize again, I don't know the name of this, but it's being held on by this, so let me see if I can pop that off. Okay, I was able to get it off, and I just used these two tools here uh, to pry it from both sides. Okay, now I can remove this whole thing out of the way. Earlier, um... I did take, there's a, hold on, oh, there's this I had to remove, and then, as you see here, I pushed in on those prongs and removed it from here, which I don't think you need to do, but anyway, I'm going to set that to the side. I put that nut back on that uh, stud so that I don't lose it. These vacuum lines here, uh, I want to get them out of the way. They just go back here uh, to this. Again, I apologize. don't know what this is called. It goes up here to the air valve. I'm just going to disconnect it from the air valve. And this... Okay, now things are coming back to me from 12 years ago. This was so difficult to get to the bolts that I never bolted it back down. And uh, I just used a zip tie. So I'm just going to cut this zip tie and unthread these uh, vacuum tubes out of here. Okay, they're routed underneath the injector harness. So I'm going to release that injector uh, connector. Okay, to get these injectors off, you pull up this gray tab. And then just put a hook right underneath there and pull up. What you're doing is opening up that that little black lever there. Okay, I've hooked this, unhooked this connector here. So I'm just gonna uh, pull these vacuum tubes uh, out from under the fuel lines here. And then pull this out. Okay, I got it out. Um, I'll leave a step by step uh, detailed uh, list in the description for um, all the all the things that I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna remove this small vacuum tube from the. Uh, fuel thing, and again, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact name, I think it's called the fuel relief pressure valve. Okay, I've marked this end with white uh, fingernail polish and also the valve so I can remember uh, what goes where. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but I removed this clip from the valve, and now I'm going to remove this not here. Okay, the whole stud came out. This loosens up the fuel well a little bit. Okay, I took out, I released all the connectors on the fuel, uh, on the back. And there's three more bolts, or nuts, whatever, holding this fuel rail in. There's one back here, so I'm going to loosen those. 
Okay, I guess they're all studs. That's gonna loosen this up. Now that my fuel line is uh, loose, I'm pulling up now to pull the injectors out. Now this one came loose up here and I had some fuel leaking, but it looks like they're gonna come out. Okay, um, I'm gonna release uh, this connector down in here. It'll give me a little bit more leeway for this other side. I'll relieve this uh, connector too on the back head, the bottom cover. Okay, I got this fuel rail loose. And I'm not sure how much more I'm going to have to do, but um, it's getting better. Okay, I found some fuel disconnect tools, so um, I tried the smallest one and put it, pushed it up on there, and it clicked. You gotta release this metal thing that's on there, and then once you get it clicked up in there, this you can pull the fuel rail up. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this one here. Okay, so I got that loose. I just used the second size here from the top. And now this whole fuel rail is loose. Okay, I got that out. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have to remove that clip on there, but I'll put it back. Okay, that frees up the front of this crossover, so I can move these lines out of the way. And... Okay, I don't know if it's showing here or not, but I got the two two lower ones here on the right side uh, loose. They won't come out till I pull the whole crossover out. Let's see. This pipe I'll eventually pull out, and this one too. The wrench I used to get those last two loose was this 13, 15 closed end wrench. It's a little longer. And the, the, the bottom left one uh, should come out, should get loosened first, because if you loosen the right one, it gets in the way. And then once I got them loose, I, I used my short ratcheting 13, but it would be nice if you had a long one of, of that. And I did have to it's, it's on, on one of them I had to, to use an extra pipe because I couldn't get it uh, loose so I just linked these up like that and was able to get that broke loose okay I found another bolt it's right under this um, pulley here right down I don't know if you can see it. So I'll try to get that one out. I just broke that loose with a deep 13 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Okay, that was a really short one. I got one more that's right down in there. So they come in pairs. There's two for each seal. Okay, the other one is under this wire harness, uh, right under here, so. Okay, I was able to get under that harness without loosening it from underneath the car, and I'll show you in a minute, in a minute, uh, how I did that. I used this uh, one and a half inch stubby extension made by Craftsman. As you can see, it's shorter when it's put together than the uh, deep socket. So the deep socket was just a little too long. Okay, I was able to get it loose. It was this bolt here. And what I did is, once I broke it loose with this, and I loosened it up four or five times, I got it loose enough to use this on it. 
then I did this for uh, quite a while. Then I was able to get it to work with this. And this is just a, a quarter inch 13 socket, long socket, with a mini, a mini flex. Once I pulled that ball down, it definitely loosened the whole crossover. But I see I got a problem over here. I've got to take this off. I believe it's the IAC. I'm just going to loosen the bottom bolt here. Alright, I got that loose. Now that I got it loose, I was able to pull this harness out from underneath there. Okay, I need to loosen those tubes back there if I can. Okay, I can't get those loose just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and take the um, tensioner off here. That's these two. Okay, I got the tensioner off. Okay, I got the camshaft pulley off. I'll leave the video of that when I get that done. And I couldn't get the water pump out. I think I turned it too far. I'm going to have to leave that in there until I get this uh, crossover out and take a look at that. Well, now I'm going to work on these back two pipes here. Okay, uh, you can't see it, but the EGR pipe is off. I pushed it back with a screwdriver. I'm having a terrible time getting this water pipe loose, so I actually broke part of the tab off. And so I'm just gonna take it apart from here. I did get this front part up. It's loose. You got it past that, and then there's a little bolt. It's gotta get up past the transmission here. But uh, I got that out. So just need to release this pipe. Okay, I got that loose with some coaxing. And, uh, now, let me just see if I can pull this up out of here. Okay, I'm just kind of gradually working it out from underneath that wire harness to the left. I got these hidden screws out, the ones that I couldn't get out. I took them out and marked them. I'm getting everything marked so I don't forget where they go. Okay, once I got the right side up above that transmission, then I was able to pull this side up and swing it around to the left, and now I can pull it up. And there's the last two hidden bolts I can take out and mark, but there it is. Okay, I finally got that out. I broke this clip. I'm going to have to replace that. And I'm just still not sure. I think you just pinch it. And then there's a seal there that's hard to pull it out of. But I think just pinch it and pull it out. But I couldn't get it out. And now you can see these were leaking real bad down at the bottom there, right there, it was leaking pretty bad, that one doesn't look the greatest either, and here's the seals, and this one's been leaking a while, I'll get everything cleaned up and get back with you. To release this, you put this tool all the way up in there and then pull out. It's kind of hard to pull out, but it did pull out. I figured something out. Um, online there were some people saying um, that the Dorman part 800 
401 could be used on the Cadillac DeVille 4.6 engine and the part that Rock Auto has is 800-431 so and it's called a heater hose adapter it's what goes in the right side of the crossover it's the part that I broke and this part 800-401 uh, is not the same and so I called Dorman to ask him and initially when I called him they said yeah they're the same and all the guy looked up was the specs for the whole the size of the threads here and the size of the opening up here and that is he said they were the same part they do have the same size openings but they're not the same part and here's I'm going to explain to you why I found online that this part was only good for certain engines now I don't know if you can see that but I think it's a 5.0 liter that is the Cadillac Escalade I'm not sure but this part will fit the Escalade now maybe it's a 5.7 but it will not fit the 4.6 now if you look on the back of this one the 800-431 it does say that it fits the Cadillac from 1998 to 2005 so I called Dorman back and I asked him about that and he said yes correct this is the proper one so I've got two of them here, and I was wondering why are they different? They look exactly the same. And I was holding these two, two uh, inserts together, and there is a difference. There's more space on this one between the catch clip and the bottom. So neither one of these would fit for the other one. They would leak, or you wouldn't be able to get it to catch. So I'm going to put this one on, and I did ask him too for the torque, and he looked it up. All data says this should be torqued down to 28 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go do that on the crossover now. You can see on the inside too they're different. They're made different because the clip's different. And one other thing I noticed is... The washer inside is at a different spot, and the hole is a different size, so you got a lot bigger hole on the correct one than you got on the other one. I'm in the process of painting this. I'm just letting this first coat dry. The reason I'm painting it is because people say the reason they leak is because they're made out of cheap metal, and they, the metal corrodes a lot, so... I was able to, first off, I was able to take all the inside parts out, including the washer, and put a thin coat of silicone grease, and I also put a thin coat of silicone grease on all the inside of the metal, and now I'm painting the outside. Putting the silicone grease on the inside and on the washer and plastic parts will help those uh, keep from drying out. And it'll help the metal from corroding. I'm not going to do a real nice job of painting. I'm just going to put on one coat of primer and one coat of silver paint. Okay, I got it painted. And I've got a 29 millimeter socket. And I think this is like a 26. So I stuffed a, the end of a sock up in there to keep it tight. Now, it's this hole. It's not this hole. That's EGR. It's, it's this hole right here. I don't really trust the white stuff that's already on there. I'm going to put a little bit of Mega Black on there. And it's supposed to be torqued at 28 foot-pounds. I don't know if i got enough strength to do that or not. But I'm going to try. Okay, I got it tight. It wasn't as bad as I thought. 
I messed up my paint job a little bit. But that would be pretty difficult to do on the car. I'm in the process of cleaning these bolts and painting them. And just uh, for anybody who lost track of what size goes where, these are in order from left to right, top to bottom. So this is the shortest one. These are the two longest ones, and they match. This one is also long, but it has uh, this extra uh, attachment to it. And then these last four are all s shorter than this one and this one, but not as short as this one. And they're all the same size. So these two go to the top left seal. These two go to the top right seal. These two go to the bottom left seal. And these two go to the bottom right seal. Well, I'm getting ready to put some Mega Black on these gaskets and put them on here to dry for about an hour or so. But I checked the trueness of this crossover and it's not true. I don't think it would pass specs, but this thing costs about $600. So it is warped a little bit. The gaskets do give a little, but not that much. It's it's off quite a bit. It rocks when I put it uh, down flat. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can make it work, though. I'm going to put um, the Mega Black on pretty thick on this side. This, this is the side that's, that's out of kilter. Yeah, this is pretty true. And I checked the openings on the car, and they seem true. So, uh, I'll go ahead and, and put these on, turn it over, lay it flat. Okay, I've got the Mega Black on there, and it's not rocking like it was. So, I'll let this dry for at least an hour. It's been an hour, and... I uh, trimmed up uh, some of the sealant and looks like everything's good. And I'm going to go ahead and put this pipe on. I've cleaned it all up. It was pretty rusty and I painted it. I've put some foam grease on the end here. And then I've put this all the way up on it. Now I'm just going to push it in there until it clicks. Okay, it's in there. Uh, it doesn't I guess it feels like it did before. It doesn't feel real tight, but I guess that's it. To release this, you put this tool all the way up in there and then pull out. It's kind of hard to pull out, but it did pull out. I'm putting this on before I install this because it is kind of hard to push in. I've cleaned all the surfaces now again with lacquer thinner. Got all these surfaces cleaned one more time. I'm just going to work this thing back in the way I took it out. I know the books did say you could use a little bit of RTV to hold these in place. Um, and then they said to use a little bit of oil on the threads of the bolts. And so I'm putting just a tiny bit of WD-40 on them. I could screw these bolts in. To the holes to make sure the holes were clean and make sure they screwed in easy. Okay, since I got the throttle body out, it's probably going to be a little bit easier. So this is the way I think I took it out. I just got the right leg started underneath the harness. And now I'm going to turn it upright. Okay, I got the right leg over the transmission. I twisted it up a little. And I'm almost in there. And at this point, I could put a little RTV on there if I wanted to. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. That far side is the side that's kind of twisted a little bit. I almost forgot this is the time when I need to put in those uh, four bottom bolts. I think three of them are not accessible once I get it in. Right now is a good time to get that EGR pipe in. If you don't do it now, it'll be a killer to get in later. 
The key to getting this thing in is pulling this harness way away, and it does help to have the ground and the UCT removed and the oil pressure switch. Make sure you get the bottom hidden bolt in past the transmission housing before you try to put the EGR valve on. Once you get it down in there, you get your EGR bolt started. Um, put your first bolt in here and um, before you get any more bolts in, stuff this wire harness down underneath uh, the crossover like that. Then get your top right bolt slightly started and get the two bottom ones uh, started. Those will be the hardest. If they don't go in easily, um, your gaskets might be off center. You don't want to force anything. Once the bolts all start easily, uh, then just start uh, tightening them down by hand. If there's any bolts that you just can't get in, you'll have to take it out and look at the gasket. And it might have slipped. If it did, you'll have to drill it out with a step bit. Bottom two bolts I got in uh, with a stubby box inch wrench and a ratchet in wrench. The top right bolt was kind of in the way, so I took it out. The bottom two bolts, uh, same thing, use these. The bottom far left bolt can either go in before you put the crossover in or after. Um, it can tend to get in the way, and but it can be pulled out again if need be. The coolant pipe or heater pipe, it gets a little bit in the way too, uh, but I'm glad I put it in. Um, it can be moved up and down. So I just keep working on these bolts to get them somewhat finger tight. It would help if the transmission shifter was out, but so far I have not taken that out. I didn't really want to mess with that. Alright, I got everything torqued down, believe it or not. And these were the only wrenches I used. I... I like that stubby. It helped me get everything nice and secure. I just alternated uh, from side to side, up and down, and got it as tight as I could with that stubby. And then as I started torquing, uh, I could only use the torque bark on the top four bolts. So I tested myself with this offset wrench and got to where I could pretty much uh, guess where 18 foot-pounds was. This wrench was the ticket. Uh, it's made by New Britain. B-R-I-T-A-N. I don't even know if you can buy it again, but um, it's actually a 9 16 and a half. And it was really nice because it bypassed uh, the bolts. It didn't get hung up on the bolts that were next next to it on the other side of the gasket. I got the EG pipe tightened up. I think that is supposed to be somewhere between 18 and 21 pounds. Now I'm going to hook up the ECT sensor in the ground. I got the ground tight with these two wrenches. Okay, I got this sensor here back on. And Probably put the uh, camshaft pulley and the water pump in soon. The wrench uh, that helped me so much on top, you can see it's got a little bit more of an offset. Uh, the bottom one is the one I used to get the bolts out, and I ran into bolt interference with that. I put, I bought a torque extension tool. It's this right here, and it lets you uh, put the torque wrench in here. Now, it didn't work in my application for the crossover because 
the bolts are down down in there so deep and so I didn't use that but I did figure something else out um, with this tool here um, once I had it on the nut and these are the two lower right ones then I figured out that this wobble extension um, it's a, a half inch it fits right in there really tight and then I put the um, torque wrench onto that so I barely had enough room for both those two right bottom ones um, this didn't work for the two left bottom ones, but I was, the two left bottom ones I finally was able to torque by using a quarter inch uh, short socket and and a quarter inch 360 wobble with an extension similar to this and then uh, actually this extension then I was able to put the big torque wrench on that. It was strange about, I guess it's been about three or four weeks since I torqued down the crossover. And so when I came out today, I double checked it and most of the top four bolts were loose. I have no idea why, except that the weather is cooler outside. So I just checked all of them and made sure they were all torqued down to specs. I think I did find one on the bottom. It was a little loose too. I'm getting ready to put in um, the water pump, but first I want to connect this heater hose. And it's a little bit tore up inside, and I got plenty of room to cut some, so I'm just going to cut this off and that'll make it fresh there and get that connected. Okay, I got that. It's starting to rain. But I'm going to try to keep working. I'm getting ready to put the water pump in. And I think if I just put some of this silicone grease on this seal, it'll stay up in there. That looks like it's going to stick. Sorry about the blurriness. I've got a light film right here, too. You don't want to get it on the pulley. This is going to turn counterclockwise to go in, and I'm going to put the small tab. See the others are bigger? Put the small tab at 7 o'clock. It's actually about 6.30. Uh, you can see the little dimple. Okay, I got it sitting in there nicely. I'll put the tool on it. Okay, some people online just turn this a fifth of a turn without torquing it. The book says to torque it at 73. Um, I had my wrench at 70 foot-pounds, and uh, the tabs bent and went underneath the tabs on the crossover. So if I turn it any more, it's going to pop out of those tabs. So... I'm going to leave it like this. It should be tight enough. Maybe somebody else out there that knows better than me uh, will have the answer for that. But in order for these that tab to go underneath the tab on the crossover, I would assume that would have bent the tab somewhat. It had to have bent the tab. So that's probably why people are having trouble getting these out. It's possible I didn't need the full torque because of the silicone I put on it. But just to turn this until the tabs stop without torquing it down may not seal the O-ring. It did take quite a bit of force to get that uh, to turn and bend those tabs. I had the uh, breaker bar a small water pipe and then a bigger one to fit inside of that and a smaller one to fit inside of that. So all together this is more than 
three feet long, barely fit underneath the hood. Okay, I've got this part all cleaned up. And it's a type of O-ring, but not really, so I haven't put anything on it. I'm just going to use it dry. And I'm going to try to attach this. At least get the hose on there and also get the um, thermostat in, the main thermostat, and the hose there too. Uh, because that can be kind of tricky to put on after the fact. This <coughs> this uh, heater hose here coming into the, the water uh, pump cover is kind of rusted. So I'm trying to uh, clean that up a little bit. Okay, I cleaned that up with a small Dremel. I cut myself a new piece of hose there. Uh, the original was pretty beat up, starting to crumble from the inside. It's a three quarters inch heater hose. I'll put the clamp on it after I get the cover in position, but I wanted to attach this first because it's kind of difficult to attach later. Actually, almost impossible. I always put a lot of dielectric grease on the joints and that keeps the rubber hose nice. I didn't pay a lot of attention when I took these out, but I think I got these right. I wish I would have marked them, but um, the nut stud uh, goes in three places and then just a regular bolt down here. And this one holds in this um, brace here. And so does this bottom one, it goes down in this hole. And then you got the extra bolt there. This one is for attaching the oil dipstick to it. To get that cover in uh, connected to the heater hose, I still had this transmission line disconnected right down there. And I had this heater hose disconnected at the bracket right there. I had it pulled off of that uh, stud there, and then once I got the water pump cover in place, I, I put it back on the stud. I got everything tightened up to 89 inch pounds. This quarter inch torque wrench worked well with a quarter inch extension and a quarter inch 10 millimeter socket. Now I can put this clamp back on and I can tighten up this brace bolt here. I've got the dipstick onto that stud now, and now this bracket will go on. Okay, everything's tightened up, and I think the next thing is the secondary air valve. I think that needs to go in before the lower radiator hose. I put on the water pump belt by moving that tensioner like that. Okay, I made a mistake earlier, and put in all these heater pipes and uh, braced them and this one back here too and realized that I needed to put this accelerator cable bracket in first so I've got that all fixed so I mentioned earlier that it's best best not to remove this if you don't have to just remove the cable so now I'm going to put the EGR valve back on and I'm using the Felpro 70914. Okay, I've got the EGR in. I'm going to torque the two bolts down to 18 foot-pounds and then I'll put the shield on. I've finally come to the point of putting the throttle body back on and I'm really happy about that. This has been a long process. Um, I did disconnect the EVAP uh, canister purge valve uh, so I can put the fuel lines back. Now when I took this throttle body off I had the fuel lines in place and the fuel rail but I'm gonna uh, leave those apart and put the throttle body on first then I'll put the fuel rail back. So I've got my cables here and I've got my cleaned up throttle body here it took me quite a while to clean this. It had so much hard carbon on it on this side. And the way I cleaned it was I took old gasoline and a stick and 
took me an hour or two, but anyway, I got it all off. So, I'm going to try to put these cables back in place over here. Once I put the cables in place, um, I'll install those two bolts uh, to put these two pieces together. Okay, I got the cables in. Now I'm going to put these two little bolts in. Okay, I had a little bit of trouble when I took this off the car. I had trouble getting the cables off, but it's because I was trying, I took these two small bolts off first. And I should have just taken the three throttle body bolts out and pulled this thing off as a unit. So, anyway, I've got the two uh, bolts in. I don't know if you can see. And... Then if you look up top here, you can see where uh, the top bolt, the top bolt um, right there also holds part of that bracket. Pre-screwed uh, these bolts in just to make sure that I've got this backing plate in the right place. So I'll take these bolts out now and clean my surfaces one more time and install this. Oh, I did want to show you the cables, so, um, I just brought the big one down and put it underneath here. Got that ball in there. And then the other one just clicks onto the side here. So, I pushed that ball up in here, you can see it. Okay, now I have not tightened those two side bolts yet. Uh, that helped me get the three main bolts in. So I'm going to tighten those first. Actually, actually, I'm going to go ahead and torque down these bolts uh, at 106 inch pounds. And I haven't tightened these two bolts here, so I'll just loosen them later and put the map sensor in. And this little clip up here is for the, the shift cable. No, I'm not going to put that in yet. I'll go ahead and put this um, perch uh, valve back on. The evap canister perch valve too. I'll hook up the throttle position sensor here. And this is the idle air control valve. And then this goes to the map sensor once I get it in. Now this purple one is for the MAF sensor and the temperature, MAF temperature sensor, which will go on after I get the 2V1. Okay, I can put in this transmission tube back. Okay, I'm just torquing this. Okay, I got the throttle body torqued down, and you can see the bolts coming in from the back here, right here. There's uh, this one, way down in there. Now I can tighten this clamp here. Okay, I got that tight. I don't know the torque. Uh, it's a seven millimeter. I've got my new injectors here. I put a little bit of silicone grease on each seal. And I'm in the process of taking the old injectors out. So I get it out of the notch here first and then I, I rotate it uh, 40, about a quarter of a turn. There I've got it rotated and then once I get it rotated I just wiggle it out. 
So I'm going to take the last three out. Okay, I got all the old injectors out. Now, they were not bad. I just figured with 160,000 miles on the car, it wouldn't hurt to have uh, new injectors. So I'll install these new ones in just the reverse. Put it in sideways and then twist it to lock it in. I've got this new uh, regulator. I'm going to install two on the fuel line. Okay, I'm going to pull this old one out. I've already got the clip pulled out. Okay, it's not coming out that easily. I'm going to put a screwdriver in the slot there on the side. There. That's going to get it out. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Okay, it looks real similar to the new one. This is the new one. Oh, I'll put a little bit of silicone grease on that little o-ring too. Okay, I've got it pressed back in there. Okay, whoops, one of the seals didn't come out with the old injectors, so I'll pull that out. Okay, I got all the new injectors in, so let me go see if I can push this in. Before I pushed this fuel rail down in, I, I made sure uh, to put my air, uh, backing lines back uh, down here to the check valve especially that goes underneath the fuel lines and then up over here uh, it goes back back then over to here and back to that check valve and I'm torquing these down at 89 inch pounds The torque for my fuel rail is 89 inch pounds, but here's a shot of different torques for different years. One thing about putting the fuel rail in, um, this uh, hose goes to the right, the PCB hose goes to the right of the fuel line and over here uh, I was trying to put in the vacuum hoses first but it's best to put in the, uh, to reconnect the um, injectors and this lays right along here and then the vacuum hoses go on top of that and this part of the vacuum hose it actually goes behind the fuel rail here, down under that sensor. And it's hard to see, but it comes along the bottom of the left side of the throttle body. And then underneath, right here. I don't know if you can see it, but underneath the upper radiator hose. And then comes up here and plugs in. And I'll plug this in here. I've got all the injectors plugged in and the coils and I've got the EJR plugged in. And I've got the clip on the fuel regulator back in and the vacuum hose connected to that and goes up to here. And I'll plug this in. Then this brake booster hose can go back on. Okay, this bolt is where you connect the coolant line coming from the coolant reservoir. Uh, but it's down here next to the throttle body. I've got a little bit of red so, uh, RTV uh, on the shoulder here. And I'm just, I'm just going to screw it into the hole here. It's hollow, so make sure it's uh, cleaned out. Okay, I'll just to uh, put over here where I had the uh, fuel rail connected and I got that support for the fuel rail under there and I'll connect this line up to here now I'll attach this J hose okay I got this J hose connected um, 
I did get my map sensor back in and I had to take out the top throttle body bolt to loosen this, so um, that's really important to get in before you put the throttle body on. That was my bad. This J hose was the last thing to connect. Um, I got this these uh, star washers screwed down and so now I was able to fill this car with coolant. I filled it about halfway up because I know it's going to uh, try to purge some of it when it warms up. And this is what I'm using. This car came with deck school, but 12 years ago I uh, changed it all out for this. And I haven't had any trouble. I just much prefer to use this than deck school. I'm mixing it uh, 40, 60, 40 coolant, 60 water. That just uh, makes me feel better about keeping this engine cool. I'll also put in a whole bottle of water wetter, which I did 12 years ago too. And uh, that makes the car run just a, a few degrees cooler. And I was real happy with that. So I'm going to use that again. I'm getting really, really close to finishing this up and getting it ready to uh, start and check for leaks. Uh, I'm really, really happy about that. This has been a long project for me. So I'm going to wrap it up for today, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, I clamped the shift cable into that socket there. And I'm getting ready to push it into the brace. And I'm putting this clip back down in there. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the bottom half of the airbox in. And on this side, um, make sure you get this in on this side before you put that in down in there. And then the washer and the screw in there, that's going to screw into this gentleman nut. Okay, it was a little tough getting in there. I did go ahead and screw that, that bolt in on this side. And then I was able to pull it in and down past this. But it might be a good idea to unscrew this so you could easily get in it get it in there and you don't crack anything. Okay, I got the computer down in there. That was a T30, by the way, to put the bottom half in. And now I got the top cover on and I'll screw that down. Okay, I've put that boot on. Then the air filter. Then the top cover here and the MAF sensor. And I'll plug in the MAF sensor. Okay, I got that plugged in. I still gotta connect my fuel lines and and put the um, the locks in place. Okay, I made a mistake. Uh, this brace has to go on, and this part of the brace down here actually goes right here. Um, so I'm gonna have to take that off. That's that's the hose that goes to the reservoir tank. Okay, I'm fixing this. Um, so I got the brace on here now, and I got that started. And then this big bolt goes in here to hold this A brace on the other side. Then I was able to put the water belt pump cover on. And the hole for that is actually on this frame. That's why I couldn't put that on before. So I'm going to tighten all these up. Okay, I put the clip back in here for the fuel rails, and I got the fuel fuel lines hooked up again. Uh, took quite a bit of pressure to put them two together. And there's this, this clip here that goes up here by the map sensor. Okay, I think I got everything back together. I finally got the car running, and uh, it took about... Uh, two gallons of coolant a little bit more maybe I ended up having to put it on a slope to get it to suck the coolant down that was the only way I could get the air out of it and the reason I knew there was air in it was because I wasn't getting any air come or any coolant coming out of this purge uh, hose but now there's coolant coming out of there I, I can feel it too because it's hot and my aftermarket gauge is working. I've been running it for 15 minutes now. 
and everything looks good. Okay, I just got done running it for 20 minutes and everything looks good. Nothing dripping under here. It looks like it took in just a little bit more coolant, but I'll look at this in the morning and if I need to, I'll put just a little bit more in. I don't know if you can see this little knob here, but um, I used to fill the coolant just as a seam, but sometimes it said that I needed to add coolant, so now I fill it up to this little knob and it seems to hold well. I want to thank you all for watching. This has been a really long video, I know. Um, and if anybody watching this is going to try this and you got any questions, feel free to send me a, a comment. And if anybody watching this has any more expertise than me and wants to um, give some suggestions, feel free to do that. Thanks uh, for all you watching. Thanks for all my subscribers. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, subscribe and I'll be adding more videos about this car. Thank you. Bye.